Android is an excellent platform for enjoying your favorite retro games on the go. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch on Android and start playing your favorite classic games in just minutes. And it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here. To level up your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content, do that by subscribing. Let's get RetroArch set up on your Android device. Start by putting your micro SD card into your computer and make sure that that card's formatted in either FAT32 or XFAT. In this case, it's a 128 gigabyte card. It's formatted in XFAT. You'll also need your game ROMs ready to copy over to that micro SD card. In this case, I have a Super Nintendo set here. And optionally, system BIOS files for certain emulators that you may want to run. Grab the ROMs and the system BIOS files folders and copy them. Navigate to your SD card, which in this case is Drive F. And then you can paste these two folders right onto the root of the SD card. Depending upon the size of your ROM set, this can take quite a bit of time. But through the magic of editing, it takes only mere seconds. And that's it. At this point, you are done with copying files. You can just go ahead and close out File Explorer, take out the micro SD card, and put it into your Android device and power it on. This is the home screen from a Galaxy Tab A, set up in dark mode to make things easy to see. From this point, you need to go to the Google Play Store in order to get RetroArch. From the main Google Play Store interface, search for RetroArch and select it. Once it loads up in Google Play Store, just tap on Install in the top right corner to install it to your device. Once RetroArch is finished installing to your Android device, tap on Open and then tap on open again to launch RetroArch for the first time. This is an important step and you don't want to overlook this. You have to give RetroArch permission to access the micro SD card in order to get access to your ROMs. Tap on OK and then tap on Allow. If you miss this step, you won't be able to access your game files. RetroArch will set up its initial file and folder structure and you may see a message with an arrow saying that the home button has been hidden just swipe up from the bottom in order to expose the home button once again. First order of business is to tell RetroArch where your system files folder is located. Tap on the settings gear icon on the right side. And when the settings menu loads up, it's literally just a dive bottom all the way to the bottom. Just swipe all the way to the bottom of settings until you get to directory. Then tap on directory to go into it. Inside directory, the first listing is for system BIOS. Tap on this to select it. From here, you need to tell it which path to use in order to get to your system BIOS. The easiest way to do this is to tap on storage. From storage, go to this weird folder, which is probably going to be a little different on your device, but it has this alphanumeric character string here. Tap on that folder. Inside here, you should be able to scroll down to the S section of the folders and you'll see the system folder that you copied over to your micro SD card. Tap on that folder to select it. And then from here, just tap on use this directory to select it and tell RetroWars to use this folder for your system BIOS files. Before you start loading cores and playing games, there are some key elements that need to be updated through the online updater. Tap on the home button on the right side to go back to the home menu and then select the online updater. You're going to need a core in order to load an emulator and play a game. Go to the core downloader and tap on it. Since these are Super Nintendo ROMs that I've copied over to the micro SD card, we're going to need a Super Nintendo emulator in order to play them. The easiest way to do this is just to scroll down as they're all listed in alphabetical order. Go into the N section for Nintendo and then find the Super Nintendo emulator of choice. In this case, it's going to be SNES 9X, the current version. To select it, just tap on it. It will download it to your system and prepare it and load it up for you. Press the back arrow in the bottom right corner of the screen. From here, there are some other key elements that need to be downloaded to your system. Swipe to scroll down through the menus until you get to Update Core Info Files. Once you get here, tap on this to select it. This only takes a couple of seconds. 
Now scroll down until you get to Update Assets and tap on it to select it. This one takes a little longer, so we'll fast forward right through. Next, swipe to scroll down until you get to Update Controller Profiles and tap to select it. Once this is done, continue to swipe to scroll down until you get to Update Cheats, which you can install optionally. Hey, no judgments here. Tap on this to select it. Next, swipe to scroll down to Update Databases and then tap to select it. When that's done, swipe to scroll down until you get to Update Overlays and then tap to select it. When that's done, swipe to scroll down to Update GLSL Shaders and then tap to select that to install the updates for the shaders. Then the last step is optional. You can swipe to scroll down to get to on-demand thumbnail downloads. If you select this, you can get a performance hit in the menu performance in terms of speed, but it does give you cover box art for the games when you scroll through them, so it does improve the overall appearance of the interface. Cool, that's everything you need from the online updater at this point. Tap on the home button to go back to the main menu. Let's go ahead and scan in your games. Tap on the menu icon, which is the one in the middle of the three icons on the right side, until you get to playlists. At this point, you can import your content from Import Content by tapping on it right here. You'll need to go to Scan Directory by tapping on this in order to tell it where to look. Once again, it's going to start with Storage, so tap on Storage. Then tap on that alphanumeric character set on the folder that you tapped on earlier. Then from here, you can swipe to scroll down until you get to the ROM folder that you want to look through. In this case, it's going to be Super Nintendo. So tap on Super Nintendo, and then tap on Scan This Directory. Now this can take quite a bit of time. Depending upon the number of ROMs that you have, it can take anywhere between the amount of time it takes to watch the trailer for a feature-length film or the entire feature-length film. Once it's done importing your content, you can tap on the playlist icon on the right side to go back to the main playlist menu. Now you can swipe to scroll down and you're going to see a brand new playlist installed here and it's going to represent whatever system you just did the scan for. In this case, it's Super Nintendo. Tap it to select it and drill in. And from here, you'll see your games list and the box art covers if you selected that in the settings for the online updater. As you'll see in a minute, it can take quite a bit of time to download and update the box art as you go through. Let's go ahead and load up a game. I'm going to tap on search here so that I can kind of expedite the process of not having to swipe through them constantly. I want to load up Super Mario World as it's kind of my default test game for running Super Nintendo games in RetroArch. As you can see here, the on-demand thumbnail updater hasn't caught up with everything just yet. All right, I'm going to scroll down until we get to Super Mario World and then tap to select it. From here, just tap on the run icon to select it. You'll be asked which core you want to use. You've already preloaded it at this point. Tap on the core and then tap on run. From here, the game will load up on your Android device. And what's great about it is it actually has virtual controls that you can play in landscape mode, or you can take your tablet or phone and flip it and play them in portrait mode. You can also connect your favorite wireless controller to your device as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comments and description below. Thanks so much. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.